This is just going to be a short video tutorial on the early stage of, de of development, particularly focused on the process of neurulation. So let's just remind you of some of the early stages in the development of mammals. We start off with a fertilized egg cell, the zygote. <clears throat> and this zygote is going to undergo a, a number of cell divisions where it's going to, the nucleus is going to divide and the cytoplasm is going to get split up into smaller and smaller portions. And these are the, called the cleavage divisions. So the first cleavage division is where we would have two cells like this. So we split the cytoplasm up into two. The second cleavage division we would then have four cells. The third cleavage division, we'd have eight cells, 16 cells, and so on. So, <clears throat> ultimately, at the end of cleavage, what you have got is a solid ball of cells. So this is a solid ball of cells, and that solid ball of cells is called a morula. Now, the solid morula is actually going to become hollow. And that hollow ball of cells is known as a blastula. <clears throat> so let's draw a blastula. So here's a blastula. It's a hollow ball of cells, like this. So this is an early blastula. So we've converted a solid ball to a hollow ball. And we said that that's called a blastula. <clears throat> now, as the blastula grows and develops, something very interesting happens. So the next stage, we're going to magnify this up a little bit. So this is what we might call a late blastula. What happens is, is that one portion, one portion of the blastula thickens. So what we now have is, yes, a cavity within a ball, but what we've additionally got is this thickened area of cells. So this is a thickening here, which I'll just draw it. And this thickened area of cells, this mass of cells, is called the inner cell mass. The inner cell mass. And believe it or not, all of your body tissues are going to develop from that inner cell mass. Now, something very interesting happens in the inner cell mass, and that is that a number of the cells die. So here's this process of cell death, which I'm just using the eraser to illustrate. And what the end result of this process is, is that we form a new cavity. So that new cavity I'm going to draw with a red outline here. So that's a new cavity that we formed in addition to the existing cavity that we had within the blastocyst itself. And can you see that the region, there is a region between the red cavity and the green cavity, that's this region here, and this region here is what is going to give rise to your body. So this is going to become the embryonic disc, which we'll have a look at a little bit later on. Now, what are the names of these cavities? They're actually quite familiar. <clears throat> the red cavity that we've formed is called the amniotic cavity. So that's the amniotic cavity, and you might have heard that as the amniotic fluid. So it's filled with fluid and that's amniotic fluid. The green cavity is called the chorionic cavity and that's also filled with fluid. So these cavities contain the fluid which bathes and protects the developing 
embryo and fetus. The blue cells are going to go on to form the embryonic disc. You might also see it called the, the primitive disc, okay, the embryonic disc. And effectively what that embryonic disc is, is it, it's the interface between two bubbles, if you like. The two bubbles being the amniotic and the chorionic cavity. So what we're going to have a look at next is the double layer of cells, which is the embryonic disc, in a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's look at the embryonic disc in a little bit more detail. So you'll remember that I said that the embryonic disc was basically can be thought of as the interface between two fluid filled bubbles if you like those being the amniotic cavity above and the chorionic cavity below and at this stage the disc is just two layers of cells thick so if we draw it like this, so all that it is, it's two layers of cells. So I'll draw on the cells like this, looking like little bricks. Give them some nuclei. And these two layers of cells have got different names. The uppermost layer of cells which is going to ultimately form the outside of your body, your skin, is called the epiblast. So this uppermost layer of cells is called the epiblast. The lowermost layer of cells is called the hypoblast. And the hypoblast is ultimately going to form your gut, the gastrointestinal tract. <coughs> you look at the names, epi meaning outside, hypo meaning beneath. But as you may have appreciated, with this, just these two cell layers, we're not actually capable of forming all of the body tissues. We actually need to form a third layer. And that third layer forms in a rather interesting way. What actually happens is that cells of the epiblast kind of migrate inwards and then back on themselves like this. And it's a bit like making a sandwich. If you think of the epiblast and the hypoblast as two layers of bread, what this process is trying to achieve is to basically put the jam in a jam sandwich. So we're trying to put the filling in a sandwich and that occurs by means of epiblast cells moving back on themselves and forcing their way in between the two layers. And this process has got a specific name. It's called the process of gastrulation. So this is the process of gastrulation that we have described. So if we just look at gastrulation in a little bit more detail. I'm going to draw the different cell layers here like this so here is the hypoblast which I'm drawing at the moment so these are hypoblast cells sitting beneath here is the epiblast which is kind of curved upwards so these are epiblast cells and what's happening at this point here is as we said earlier the epiblast cells are kind of diving underneath forcing their way between epiblast and hypoblast and forming this new layer All right. so here are cells from the epiblast kind of breaking away and contributing to a new layer and now we've got three layers of cells so this is gastrulation and now we form three layers the names actually change 
no longer is this top most layer called epiblast it's actually now called something different it's called ectoderm ectoderm and that means sort of outermost skin ecto meaning outside what was the hypoblast has got a different name this becomes the endoderm so what was hypoblast is now called endoderm meaning innermost skin and this new layer that's been formed by the migration of epiblast cells is called mesoderm and these three layers are capable of giving rise to all of your body tissues so the ectoderm gives rise to the skin and the central nervous system the mesoderm gives rise to tissues such as muscle and bone and the endoderm forms your gastrointestinal tract so next I would like to talk to you about how the neural tube is formed from the ectoderm but before we can really do that we have to take a little bit of a step backwards and we have to look at the embryonic disc again so let's draw the embryonic disc so there's the embryonic disc you might remember from the lecture that we have a structure called the primitive node here and remember that that's got the ciliated cells which are involved in differentiating left from right sitting kind of behind caudal to the primitive node is a structure called the primitive streak okay so this is the primitive streak and actually the primitive streak is the place along which the epiblast cells are migrating inwards to form mesoderm so all along the primitive streak epiblast cells are migrating in and mesoderm is migrating all around the embryonic disc producing the jam in the jam sandwich so it's not just migrating in that region it's also of course migrating all the way up here in addition a process which occurs at the same time as this is the formation of a structure called the notochord and the notochord is formed from mesoderm and it grows upwards from the primitive node in this direction here so this is the notochord which is forming there and in the following drawings which I'm going to show you they're actually a cross section going through the notochord at about this level here so in the next few slides we're going to see a cross section at the level of that dashed blue line so I'm going to draw that cross section which I mentioned in the previous slide now but I'm going to do it in a slightly more simplified way the black line here is going to represent ectoderm the blue line is going to represent endoderm and this red blob is the notochord which is in the midline and which is formed from mesoderm now as we said in the lecture the notochord releases a number of chemical factors which diffuse towards the ectoderm and what these factors are going to do is they're going to tell the cells in that region of the ectoderm to start to move to start to fold so let's have a look at what that folding process looks like so I'm just going to delete those arrows and I'm going to delete a portion of the ectoderm like that the first stage is that the ectoderm starts to bulge downwards draw that on now so here's the ectoderm it, it's bulging downwards 
towards the notochord and the in, under the influence of those molecules that the notochord is releasing. Now, that neural groove is going to get deeper and deeper. So the next stage is that the groove is going to continue to grow downwards towards the notochord and as we said it's going to get deeper. All right. And the next thing that's going to happen is that the two outermost edges of this groove are going to start growing towards each other like this. And they're going to eventually meet. So the next stage is going to look something like this. So here they're coming together very very close like that until eventually they join up and fuse. So the situation that we have is that the ectoderm reforms, heals over, and that we have then a tube has formed, has pinched off from the ectoderm itself. And this was all under the influence of the notochord. And this is called the neural tube. And it's the neural tube which is going to go on and form your brain and your spinal cord. And if you remember from the lecture, this process can go wrong. And we can actually have conditions such as spina bifida occurring. So I hope that that's been useful to you. If you're still struggling, then I do recommend... Principles of Anatomy and Physiology by Tortora. And if you're still struggling, then please feel free to contact me. If you like this video, or if you didn't like it, then it would be really helpful if you could leave some feedback on the website as well. Okay? Thanks a lot. Bye.